Here are my top 35 game dev tips that have helped me greatly over the past year and hopefully they're useful to you for 2024. Enjoy. Tip number one, find your game dev goal. Saying I'm just going to work on my game and see where it goes is not a goal. If you're not specific, you'll just run in circles. Do you want to become a full-time indie game developer? Do you want to make three small games by the end of the year? Do you want to create a successful devlog series? Be very clear about where you want to end up by December 31st. Tip number two, don't worry about choosing a game engine. If you already have some experience in one, just stick with it. And if not, just learn Godot and don't overthink it. The next few tips are about the learning phase of game dev. And so here's what I think you should do to learn efficiently. Tip number three, learn the basics of programming in just a week. So some topics that you should research are variables, arrays, if statements, loops, and objects. Tip number four is learn to think like a programmer, which you can do by watching the video in the top right corner, instead of learning to copy specific tutorials. Tip number five, be willing to do your own research and figure out how to implement things on your own. Tip number six, read through my indie game dev starter guide, which you can get for free down in the description. Tip number seven is to do everything you can to release a game as quickly as possible in a weekend or in a week. This is the best way to learn quickly. And once you've done this a few times, you can start to implement these next few tips. Tip number eight, as you release a few simple games, start thinking about how to incorporate what Thomas Brush calls the Trinity hook into your next big project. What this means is that your game will be super focused around one core mechanic and that your game's gameplay, story, and visuals will all coincide around one fundamental design pivot point. Tip number nine, whenever you think that you understand your game idea, cut it in half before trying to make it. Tip number 10, whenever you think about whether or not a feature belongs in your game, think about if it supports the Trinity hook or if it has nothing to do with it. This will mitigate overscope. Tip number 11, make sure that your game actually contains a challenge. You'd be surprised at how many people don't do this. Even a good walking simulator has some sort of challenge to it. A player wants to feel that their actions have impacts on the world. And on the flip side, you could go too far with the challenge because of poor balancing and players will find it very frustrating if your game is unreasonably difficult. The way to solve this is playtesting. Tip number 12, if you want to go full time with making games, watch a bunch of Chris Zukowski talks and learn how Steam shoppers think. On that note, once you start your commercial game project, come up with a hypothetical ideal player that you'll be designing the game for. Be as specific as possible to the point where you can tell me what the number one thing that he finds frustrating about his favorite genre is and the thing that he loves about his favorite games. This ideal player might be you. You just have to get into those specifics of points of frustration and things that are good, make sure that the game that you're building is very clear and addresses those things for the audience that will love it. Tip number 14 is put your Steam page up early and make it start gathering wishlists for at least a year. Tip number 15 is focus on wishlist velocity. That means if your game is getting about 10,000 wishlists in a year, it has a good chance that it could do well. But if you're struggling to get even a few hundred wishlists in a year, your game isn't resonant enough and isn't a strong enough idea to be worth you spending years of your life making assuming you're trying to make money off of games. Number 16, if your game is struggling to get wishlist, then aim to release it as soon as possible, like tomorrow or maybe in like a month or something, which means downsize the scope immensely. Then move on to the next project with all that you've learned. Tip number 17, research popular indie games made by solo developers that did really well. See if you can spot any patterns in these games that help them do well, that might be missing in your game. And on the flip side, look at what they're not doing that you might be doing that might be holding your game back. Tip number 18, learn color theory, things like color palettes and saturation and develop an eye for why things look good. Tip number 19, similarly learn visual comp composition and incorporate it into your level design. These core artistic principles are way more important than the minutia of, for example, 3D modeling or texturing. It's better to work with simple shapes that look good than complicated shapes that look bad. Tip number 20, improve your game feel. Things like adding a modest amount of screen shake or camera movement, particle effects, better sound effects, controls responsiveness to improve the experience for your players. Tip number 21, make sure your game communicates itself well to your players. What I mean by this is make sure that the visual language of your game is consistent so that the player always knows what's an enemy, what is a walkable surface, what is a dangerous thing that they should avoid. It's very important to have that clarity. Tip number 22, learn to take feedback. Understand that when people insult you and your game, it's because they're frustrated. And although the way they say things can sometimes hurt, especially if it's about the features that you love in your game or even about you as a person, like saying, oh, the dev must this or the dev must that. If you take all the feedback as a whole and detach your 
yourself from your game, you can draw some good conclusions about what your next game should do to improve. It'll also help you understand your audience and what they want and what they hate better. You'll notice that this also means that the more games you release, the better you'll get at this. It might seem like a no-brainer, but people are still out there trying to get their one big massive game done without having released anything before. Tip number 23 is watch people play your game because although people can be negative, on the flip side, people can give you way too many compliments if you just ask them what they thought. If you watch them play, you'll see their frustrations come to light in action. And you also see how players play your game in a way that you didn't expect or intend. Tip number 24, now some programming tips. If you're at a point where you're releasing a medium-sized game on Steam, make sure to take the time to understand code readability and good programming practices. Tip number 25, every repeated code should be a function. Tip number 26, any function that returns of value should only return that value and do whatever calculations it needs to do that. It shouldn't be doing what's called side effects, such as modifying other values that are not being returned. That way you can just look at the function header and know exactly what it does and not be confused as to why things are changing in your game that you didn't expect. If you have a bunch of them, it's usually really hard to track down where that change is being made. Tip number 27, be obnoxiously clear with how you name things. So for example, instead of naming your function is in range, call it something like is player in enemy attack range. It's not the best example because it all depends on the circumstance, but my point is to just be as specific as possible with how you name your functions and your variables. Tip number 28, learn design patterns, especially singletons, state machines, and maybe factory. Tip number 29, building off of that, make your main player component, like player data or whatever it is, a singleton so that it's accessible everywhere and you don't have to use game object and get component references all over the place. Tip number 30, have a game manager or scene manager manager game object in your game. Now we're going to start talking about some slightly more advanced tips, so maybe you've already released a medium-sized game on Steam, Here's the first tip. Number 31 is implement an event handler system. These are extremely important if you have different components communicating with each other. Your code will be much more readable if a game object or component that takes an action limits its code to that action, and then the game object that reacts to that action has its own code separate from the component that it's reacting to. Tip number 32, a quick tip, make sure that your animations aren't clipping through the floor and that the feet don't slide on the floor as you Walk. Players hate this. Tip number 33, make sure that you implement key binding and any controller support into your game. The same goes for a lot of different settings and options that you would typically expect. Steam players really get ticked off when they feel like a developer hasn't implemented what they perceive as basic settings that should be in every game. Tip number 34, make sure you look into static batching and optimization. Having lots of objects in your scene shouldn't put a dent in your performance if you're doing things correctly. Number 35 is sort of a bonus tip. If you want to make devlogs, make sure your devlogs are unique, exciting, and creative. For example, are your devlogs just going to be, I had an idea for a game, I ran into bugs, I only had two hours to make the game, I fixed the bugs, go play it. Why should I watch that if I've already seen so many devlogs just like that? What makes your devlogs and also your games stand out? Obviously not all of these will apply to you in every circumstance, and honestly if you try to use them all at once for your first game, it's going to be pretty overwhelming and end up causing you trouble. So make sure that you watch this video next, because you'll get a very streamlined, concrete outline of the three major phases that you have to go through as a game developer and not get completely lost along the way. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.